Chapter 3 Motivating the Saboteur To incite our friend to the active practice of simple sabotage and to keep him practicing that sabotage over sustained periods is a special problem. Simple sabotage is often an act which our friend performs according to his own initiative and inclination. Acts of destruction do not bring him any personal gain and may be completely foreign to to his habitually libertarian attitude towards people, property, and services. Also, the tendency to respect property may be a particular burden when encouraging our friend to do that which may seem contrary to the disposition of a good and peaceful person. Objections regarding the destruction of property, while seemingly noble, are based on the wrong-headed understanding of the violent nature of the state and the stolen hordes and possessions the state has amassed. Also, in reference to slacktivism, purposefully acting stupid is contrary to human nature. He may frequently need guidance, encouragement, stimulation, assurance, information, and suggestions regarding feasible methods of using that kind of simple sabotage. Chapter 3, Section 1 Personal Motives Part 1. The ordinary person very probably has no immediate personal motive for committing simple sabotage. Instead, he must be made to anticipate indirect personal gain, such as might come from the fall of the state or the destruction of the ruling elite and their minions. Gain should be stated as specifically as possible for the area addressed. Simple sabotage will hasten the day when Commissioner X and his deputies Y and Z will be thrown out, when particularly obnoxious regulations and prohibitions will be abolished, when taxation will end, and so on. Abstract verbalizations about personal liberty, freedom of the press, and so forth will not be convincing in most parts of the world. In many areas, they will not even be comprehensible. Part 2 since the effect of his own acts of sabotage are limited, the saboteur may become discouraged unless he feels that he is a member of a larger, though unseen group, of like-minded saboteurs operating against the enemy of humanity throughout the world. Several methods can be used to encourage the friend saboteur, helping them gain access to the dark web or guiding them towards podcasts or other sources of information may help. Along these lines, statements praising the effectiveness of simple sabotage can be collected and then published on the dark web, on Freedom Radio, on podcasts, and on other forms of subversive media. Estimates of the proportion of the population engaged in sabotage can be disseminated. Instances of successful sabotage are already talked about negatively by the mouth of the state, so using their news reports while giving them positive spin can be of great encouragement and should not be that difficult. However, all care should be taken to avoid exposing the identity and the personal details of our friends. This should always be of the utmost concern. All information disseminated should be continued and expanded while remaining compatible with security and individual safety. Those who understand OPSEC should put forth special effort into helping the Friend Saboteur network become as educated as possible on the topic. Once the individual saboteur becomes more knowledgeable on the topic, he will be more confident to download material from the Internet and use the dark net. Part 3. The next step in motivating the local friend saboteur is to create a situation in which the friend saboteur acquires a sense of responsibility and begins to educate others in what he has learned about the art of simple sabotage. Ideally, establishing a base of operations where training and encouragement of new friends would develop and branch out with yet more bases of operation. Few things encourage a person to learn their craft as intensely as teaching since you must learn the craft in order to effectively teach. And as you teach, you gain a sense of ownership in your students and in your organization. Chapter 3, Section 2 Encouraging Slacktivism Along with Disruption and Destruction It should be pointed out to the saboteur where circumstances are suitable 
that he is acting in self-defense against our common enemy or retaliating against our enemy for other acts of D&D. But in all cases, he is a saboteur because he is trying to stop the state from further atrocities upon the innocent. And the faster we destroy the state, the more innocent lives we save. Our friend should be constantly reassured that he is not initiating aggression, but is acting in defense of the powerless. Also, a reasonable amount of humor in the presentation of suggestions for simple sabotage will relax tensions and fear. Again, and as always, an emphasis of non-aggression against the innocent and respect for true private property must be maintained. When engaging in slacktivism, the saboteur may have to reverse his thinking, and he should be told this in so many words. Where he formerly thought of keeping his tools sharp, he should now let them grow dull. Surfaces that formerly were lubricated now should be sanded. Normally diligent, he should now be lazy and careless, and so on. Once he is encouraged to think backwards, he'll see many opportunities in his immediate environment which cannot possibly be seen from a distance. A state of mind should be encouraged that anything can be sabotaged and every little act is a strike against the enemy of humanity. Among potential friend saboteurs who are engaged in D&D, two extreme types may be distinguished. On one hand, there is a friend who is not technically trained and employed. Wait staff, trash collectors, janitors, roofers, groundskeepers, meter readers, dog walkers, and anyone in the service industry. This activist can use specific suggestions as to how he can and should employ D&D as well as details regarding the tools and means by which D&D is safely accomplished. Direct two-way communications with someone who has experience in the same field will be tremendously helpful and encouraging. These friend saboteurs are extremely important in the overall operation since they can be both numerous and, because of their jobs, they can provide critical information to the wider network as to the movements of targets and the daily lives of enemy personnel. They can be as important in gathering information about our targets as they are in actually committing simple sabotage directly. At the other extreme is the man who is a technician, a specialist, a journeyman, an engineer, a manager, or a system administrator. Positions such as equipment operator, automobile mechanic, network administrator, electrician, or fire suppression professional are critical for infiltration and for training other saboteurs. Presumably, this activist would be able to devise methods of simple sabotage which would be appropriate to his own facilities. However, this man needs to be stimulated to reorient his thinking in the direction of D&D. &D. Specific examples, which need not be from his own field, should accomplish this. Keeping always in mind our enemy is the state, its governments, and its crony corporations not the lives and property of those just trying to live their lives in peace. Various media may be used to disseminate suggestions and information regarding simple sabotage. Portable drives can be used for drive drops, where a thumb drive or the equivalent can be stashed in a public place. Our friend can sit down at a table, grab the drive from its hidden spot, plug it into his device, accessing the info, then put the drive back for the next friend. He may add info to the drive at the same time, or the drive can simply be picked up and taken to a safe location. A public library, a coffee shop, a highway roadside rest area, or public park are all good places for such activity. Other methods may be, as the immediate situation dictates, podcasts using code words and phrases, local freedom radio, blog posts, social media, the dark web, Handouts at various gatherings such as concerts or other methods. Instructions and suggestions may be directed towards specific geographic or occupational areas, or they may be general in scope.
Finally, activists may be trained in the art of simple sabotage in anticipation of a time when they may be able to be directly involved or communicate this information directly to other of our friends, but may not be actively engaged at that time, a sort of sleeper cell waiting for activation. Chapter 3 Part 3 Safety Measures the very first thing the friend saboteur should clearly understand in regards to safety is that, because of the nature of the risks involved and the nature of our struggle, if or when the friend saboteur is caught by authorities, he is on his own. He should understand that although some private attorney or other benefactor may step forward to help, the most likely scenario will be that his friends and family will renounce him and no network of activists will be there for support. This should always be on his mind as he considers each and every act of simple sabotage. The amount of actions carried out by the saboteur will be governed not only by the number of opportunities he sees, but also by the amount of danger he feels. Bad news travels fast, and simple sabotage will be discouraged if friend saboteurs are being arrested. Also, unlike our enemy, the state, we lack an endless supply of young gullible men and women willing to throw away their lives for a cause. Therefore, we must see to the safety of those brave individuals who are willing to take the tremendous risks involved in direct actions, which are the hallmark of simple sabotage. It should not be difficult to prepare handouts and other media for the saboteur about the choice of weapons, time, and targets which will help insulate the saboteur against detection and retaliation. Among such suggestions might be the following. Use of materials which appear to be innocent. A pocket knife or nail file can be carried normally on your person, either as a multi-purpose instrument for creating damage. Matches, pebbles, hair, salt, nails, over-the-counter laxatives, and dozens of other D&D materials can be carried or kept in your living quarters without exciting any suspicion whatsoever. If you are a worker in a particular trade or industry, you can easily carry and keep such things as wrenches, hammers, emery paper, and the like. Try to commit acts for which large numbers of people could be responsible. If you blow out the wiring in a factory at a central power box, make sure that almost anyone could have done it. On the street sabotage after dark, the type you might be able to carry out against a police car or SUV is another example of an act for which it would be impossible to blame you if you are careful in your operation. In all cases, careful planning, knowledge of surveillance cameras, advice from the experienced, and secrecy are critical in the safely executing any operation of D&D. Do not be afraid to commit acts for which you might be blamed directly, so long as you do so rarely, and as long as you have a plausible excuse. You dropped your wrench across an electric circuit because of clumsiness. Always be profuse in your apologies. Frequently, you can get away with such acts under cover, pretending stupidity, ignorance, overcaution, fear of terrorists or gangs, lack of training, or physical disability. After you have committed any act of simple sabotage, resist all temptation to wait around and see what happens. Loiterers arouse suspicion. Of course, there are circumstances when it would be suspicious for you to leave. If you commit sabotage on your job, you should naturally stay at your workstation so long as it is safe to do so. Also, every friend saboteur should understand that as stupid as our enemy appears at times, they do learn and they ad will adapt to the events we trigger. You may not be able to repeat the same methods and processes of sabotage, so you should always be on the lookout for new methods and unexplored weaknesses in the locations and workplaces for which you have access.